Hello, in this video, we're going to see how we can implement univariate linear regression using gradient descent concept. If you haven't checked out my previous video on linear regression and gradient descent, I'll give you the link above. Go to the video, complete it, and then come back so that you can understand it better. Start with implementing our two libraries, NumPy and Matplotlib. Now, what is a univariate linear regression? Whenever you have a single feature, x, to predict a single dependent variable, y, that's what you call a univariate linear regression is. In this case, we have our feature variable or our independent variable, giving it a name, number of our study, and then we have a target variable or a dependent variable, which is our exam score. If we plot these data, what we can see is that the data we prepare has the given kind of distribution. Okay, how do we start? What we do is we first create a design matrix. The design matrix usually written as X contains our independent variable. In general, with M data points and N features, our design matrix will have M rows and N columns. So let's begin. We'll first transpose our array here so that the structure looks like this. And then we'll insert one to, the, to its previous column so that the structure changes from this to this here. Now, why do we have this one? I'll explain you about that after some time. And then we also prepare our y here. Now, we come to our hypothesis function. Now, what is a hypothesis function in linear regression? If you observe the structure of the hypothesis function, this is what hypothesis function in linear regression is. S theta x equals theta naught x naught plus theta one x one plus theta two x two and so on. Where theta naught, theta one, theta two, theta until theta n are our parameters and x naught, x one, x two are our features. What we do in linear regression is provided these features x naught, x one, x two, the machine tries to learn the parameters theta naught, theta one and theta two and not only learn them but they try to figure out the optimal parameter that is required for your kind of data and your desired model. So let's go back and define our hypothesis function here. What we have done is we have simply defined a dot product of x and theta as we can see in the equation here. Also about that one that we previously added uh, to our feature columns. So what is that one? Here, if you see, in case of univariate linear regression, our equation is, is just going to be reduced to these two parameters here, theta naught x naught and theta one x one. Well, we know what x one is. X one is the number of hours studied that we've added. But what is x naught? Well, we consider x naught to be one here. So that's why I've added one to the design matrix and then we are going to pass this prepared matrix to our hypothesis function. Okay, now we'll also go back to our cost function. So the cost function is nothing but hypothesis minus y into hypothesis divided by two. So, so that's what we have done here. Also, we define our, our function for gradient. So gradient is nothing but our x matrix or our design matrix multiplied by h x theta minus y, which is hypothesis minus y or y predicted minus y. Also, finally, we define our gradient descent function. Now, what happens in our gradient descent function? We basically follow two different steps here. First one, we calculate gradient from any given x, y that we start from and using any initial value of theta using function gradient. And then we update our theta based on the gradient value that we've calculated for that particular x, y and theta initial and the learning rate that we provide to the model. Now, what each of these lines does. So these two variables are just here for saving our cost for every iteration and gradient for every iteration. Now, what is iterations here? And then why have I defined number of iterations here? Well, you actually don't know where your local minimum or your global minimum that you're looking for is. So you cannot let gradient descent carry on for endless loop. So you need to stop it somewhere. 
So that's what number of iterations is doing. We're, we're only allowing the model to carry out a certain number of steps. And then we assume that in those number of steps and our given learning rate, we kind of get our optimal parameters here. Okay. So now we have also initial, initialize our theta as theta initial. And for now, every iterations, what we do is we calculate gradient for a particular position x, y and theta. We update our theta using learning rate and our calculated gradient. And then we've stored uh, cost for that particular iteration and gradient for that particular iteration. Now let's run this and and then we can directly call our gradient descent passing our x y any initialized value of theta or any random value of theta with a certain learning rate and the number of iterations here so let's just run this oh i think i've missed a lot of stops here so we'll run a hypothesis cost gradient and gradient descent and finally run this okay we see that we have received our theta naught and theta one from our hypothesis function or the parameters that we need but we're actually not sure about the learning rate because they seem too vague here and then well they have crossed over to infinity which means your learning rate is probably too high for the model to converge somewhere or converge to the local minimum so let's change our learning rate and give it 0 0.01 let me run all the cells again and as you can see, we have our theta naught and theta one, which are different from the earlier theta naught and theta one that we got. And then if we observe the cost function, what we see is our actual cost started at 78 and after 500 iterations, the cost ended at 69, which is a good sign because with respect to cost function, what we assume is whenever we start randomly the cost might be very very high but as we gradually go down or take those steps using our gradient descent algorithm the cost should decrease in each and every iteration which is happening here which which means our gradient descent algorithm is working but is this the optimal theta that we're looking for or is this the exact optimal theta or the exact parameter that the machine need to learn to represent the data distribution that we've given? Well, not exactly. And why is that? That's because you've limited the gradient descent algorithm to a certain number of steps. I'm not sure if I increase the number of steps to thousand, you might see the cost value reducing more and more and more and more, which means You've not exactly reached the minima, but you're somewhere closer to the minima or maybe going to the right direction. So using gradient descent, you don't always get the optimal value of theta. And also the learning rate hinders that process a lot. Well, with the value of theta, we'll see and visualize the result here. So let's visualize the result here. If we, if we have modeled our data correctly or the parameters that we've acquired has modeled the data correctly well you see the straight line it seems that the uh, the parameters that we've got has kind of modeled the data that we have correctly but we're not sure that this is a very exact exact result that we need to get well we'll store this theta somewhere and then check if this is the correct optimal value of theta or not because we have another process which is called normal equations you can retrieve the exact optimal value of theta using normal equations too which we're going to implement in the next video so i'll see you in the next video if you have any problem do comment down below and i'll try to help you out thank you